Hey, Bruce. Hey, Brucey. You know, Bruce doesn't get a lot of camera time because he's usually hiding in Asher's room, but he's a sweet boy. All right, guys, real talk. My kitchen is kind of a wreck. Today is one of those days that I kind of feel like don't turn on the camera. I don't have anything to say. I feel like a bump on the log. Sometimes the best thing for me when I feel like that is to just turn on the camera. Go outside and always find things to talk about. Uh, first thing I'm doing right now is getting a chicken ready to go in the oven. Benjamin turned eight yesterday and I let my kids pick their birthday dinner. It can be something that I cook, like they're something that's their favorite, something they like, um, or it can be something that we buy, like we'll go buy food. The normal standards don't apply because it's a birthday, so if you've ever heard me talk about food, I typically want to instill in my children that we should mostly be aiming to nourish our body with food. But you know, you can eat most things occasionally and still be mostly nourishing. So, I mean, it's anything goes. Like one year, Asher specifically requested store hot dogs, not organic, white buns, not organic, and uh, store-bought cake with food dye icing. <laughs> literally what he wanted he was like eight or nine okay like and i would have bought him the stuff that he asked for anyway benjamin's request on his birthday has been the same the last couple years and he asks for chicken noodle soup with a soda on the side now if you remember there was like a kind of viral song early in things being viral called chicken noodle soup with soda on the side. He wanted chicken noodle soup with soda on the side. So uh, this year it was a very specific request. It was chicken noodle soup with the onions, celery, and carrots cut up tiny, tiny in the food processor with long wide noodles and with root beer in a glass bottle. That was the soda. So last night we had chicken noodle soup with the soda on the side. This is one of our monster chickens that we raised. We had several that got really big in the last uh, batch. Maya pulled this one out of the freezer and it wouldn't fit in the Instant Pot. It was too big, which I was making the chicken noodle soup. But I was cooking the chickens in the Instant Pot because I didn't pull them out the night before. The chicken's still mostly frozen. I'm not cooking that tonight. Uh. You'll know these days. Um, I just called Jeremiah and he's like, you know what, we'll eat leftovers and go outside to the garden. <laughs> Bless that man. Y'all, do you have eight jillion names for your animals? Like William here, William Wallace, William, Willy Wham, Willy Will, Big Willy Will, Tiny Precious, um, Glorious Kitty, Mr. Kitty, and then Bruce, Bruce the Goose, Brucey Goosey, just Goose, Fat Cat, Big Cat, Trader Cat. Oh look, here's James Alexander, Malcolm McKenzie Fraser, AKA Jamie, Wee Jim, Jimmy Jim, Jimmy John, lots of names there. And they could all at any point be called Kitty Kitty. And then here's Katie Girl, KT, KT, Katie Girl, Krusty Kate, Falcor. Oh, Katie's going to the Gruber tomorrow. She needs it. Bear and Lulu are actually in the backyard right now, um, hanging out for a little bit. Lulu doesn't have a ton of nicknames yet, but that's because she's young. We've only had her for five months. Today is actually our last really warm day before it's going to cool off a little bit. Still be like warmish, um, as in a lot warmer than where it is for those of you who are covered up in snow. It's not going to be like tank top weather. So I'm soaking it up. Check this out. Um, obviously, this is still in progress, but um, Jim and Mike came out today and we're working on the stone. And this is all concrete that the stone is set in and they are using that to level it all out. So I'm not gonna step on that because it's still wet. And I came out here today and I was talking to Michael and he had sent me like a TikTok or a Instagram reel where someone had taken like bricks and they were laying like a brick pathway but they left some of them out and backfilled them with dirt and like planted moss or something in them. And it was really pretty. Kind of made my 
wheels turn, I really wanted to grow some Carolina Jasmine on this um, pavilion. And I was planning on just putting it in pots at the bottom of this. And I'm still going to put some pots around here. But I came out today and I asked him what he thought about maybe doing a variation of that idea. And we're actually going to take this stone. This one's not going to be here. And then this stone. And basically it's not going to be concreted in there so we can dig down and I want to plant jasmine into the ground and kind of backfill some good soil over it and see if we can do that and train it to grow up um, up here onto the pavilion. I am too excited about this space. I'm just so, so happy. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? So we started these beds at the end of last summer. Um, we did those those four first and I started here. Jeremiah still has one to build and make a video for you guys. We had started to build it and then lost the footage and so we have to start over fresh. Um, but then we finished it out over the winter and it felt so disjointed until the pavilion went up. And now with all of these little details coming together, it is really starting to feel, I mean, I can just feel the potential of this beautiful space. We, we did end up with a freeze on the calendar in like a week and a half it's saying that it's supposed to lightly frost i'm not worried about it because i haven't planted anything out yet but all the trees are blooming i think they'll be far enough along that a really light frost shouldn't damage them um, last year everything had started blooming all the trees started blooming and the oak trees actually got so knocked back by a late freeze that we didn't have like fully leafed out oak trees until like june or something crazy and I'm hoping that doesn't happen again. I'm hoping that everything is now established enough that if the freeze does come, if the frost comes, it'll be light enough that it won't cause any ma massive damage. So I've just been waiting for more of my tomatoes to come up before I really start separating them. As you can see, that is happening. Look at all these little guys about to have their birthday. In here too, lots of babies that are just barely bending up out of the soil, such a cool thing. Today I actually went to a farm store and I saw that they had tomato starts out. So here is my yearly PSA that I make. Um, just because a plant is being sold at a store does not mean it is time to grow that plant outside. So if you're a new gardener and you're buying starts, please do not assume that just because you saw a tomato plant on a shelf at a store that you can go home and put that in the ground, check your forecast know what your estimated last frost date is and check your forecast. Now I will say you can put things in the ground and then work really hard to protect them through a freeze or you can just wait until the freeze has passed and that's my way of doing things simply because I'll forget and then they'll die. Oh look there's a little Paul Robeson tomato. It's the first. Well there's a few there. It's one of my most favorite tomatoes. Oh, and a little basil baby. Happy birthday, little guys. Look at these. They're all coming up. Oh, we're going to make so much tea out of these. Another cool update that's happened here is the asparagus has started to grow. I made a little Instagram reel over the biggest asparagus stalk I had ever seen in my life. There are quite a few coming up. Now, this is only the second year for my asparagus. If you start with crowns, uh, you can harvest some in your second year. The thing is with asparagus is you really want to give it an opportunity to get very well established. So you'll hear people say you plant asparagus you can't harvest for three years. Technically that's really more from seed. If you're harvesting from crowns you're harvest you're you're already planting fairly mature root systems but we didn't harvest any the first year. You can harvest very sparingly the second year and then the third year you harvest for a while and then you stop harvesting to let the plants come up um, because we these are perennials we want them to be established if you harvest all of them then eventually they'll stop trying uh, you got to give them a chance to live at some point i'll say this bed and that bed went to seed last year um, and we have baby asparagus all over Actually, let's go down to the high tunnel. I saw something yesterday that I thought I got to show you guys. All right. Let's come in here. Green stalk's getting a makeover. 
kind of dirty. I'm gonna dig up some strawberries, which we had put on all the beds, um, and put them back in here. Okay, so this bed, or all of these beds in here, had asparagus in them. And a couple months ago, Will actually dug all these crowns up because I decided I didn't like doing the perennial high tunnel because really I can do a lot of production in a high tunnel over winter. Over winter, perennials are all dormant and taking up space. And I decided, nah, we live in mild South Carolina. Let's move that stuff out. Let's put the citrus in pots because frankly, even in the high tunnel when it got really cold, some of the citrus did die. Um, so I wanna put it in pots so I can move it to the glass greenhouse and heat it, take the perennials out and grow lots of food over winter. Thus we moved the asparagus out. It's on the other side of the pond doing lovely but i've got all of this coming up which we're gonna have to just dig out and look at this hold on let me see look at this teeny tiny asparagus Can you so i don't know if these are growing from where seeds were dropped and this is just from started seeds or if it's growing from um like little leftovers of the root system because we got the majority of the roots out and this gave me the clear understanding of like oh this is why we don't eat asparagus for three years after it's planted like look at this at first we were we were like what is that <laughs> what is this thing that looks like little tiny asparagus ferns and then i saw some of them in this form and i ate one and it's it's asparagus <laughs> it tastes like asparagus and it's all of the places um where the asparagus was i'm pretty sure that it's growing from seeds because it's like barely rooted so it has to be growing up from where the seeds fell i just i can't get over it like, look at that it's the littlest asparagus I ever saw. I was thinking maybe like I don't need to just dig them, like take them all out. I think I should probably scoop them out and put them in some pots. Maybe go plant them. One of the places I want asparagus to grow. I don't really want it to grow in here, but gosh, I just, I hate to stop a volunteer plant. Um, I have to because I'm trying to cultivate spaces. But when I see the will to grow in a thing, I'm like... You go, tiny asparagus. So this is cool, something that I'm just seeing that just came up today. So in all of these beds, you'll see there's a row of beans. Now these are starting to come up. Here's one, here's one. Um, each one of these beds has a row of beans. Now beans are very uh, frost tender. So if it were to freeze again, it would kill these. I guess if we closed up the high tunnel, maybe we could protect them if it wasn't a hard freeze. Oh, look at that. Asparagus. Who knew? I'm on pretty strict carnivore diet right now, um, doing kind of a reset. We went on vacation with some friends, and I, I didn't throw caution to the wind on what I was eating, but I definitely was more lax with the things like sugar and by the end of that I had so much inflammation I came home and decided it was time to do a reset the other day bear with me I'll get back to the beans but the other day um, I pulled a stalk out like this and normally I'll just eat them raw they're so good um, they're so like soft and tender and flavorful and there was this big fat one it was like the first one I had seen and I grabbed it and snapped it off and then I realized like, I can't eat this. So I took it inside and Maya was the only one here. And I was like, hey, uh, you have to eat this. <laughs> you have to eat this raw asparagus. And he's like, I don't want to. And I'm like, please, please, can you please eat it? Like, I can't just let it waste. And what am I gonna do with one asparagus stalk? He ended up, you know, doing it for me and eating the end off the asparagus stalk. If you have asparagus growing in your garden, even if it is early, like snap one stalk off and eat it raw. Just, it's a cool experience because you wouldn't do that with grocery store asparagus. It would be too woody. But when it's fresh picked at home, it's so soft and nice. So I'm gonna take this one in and uh, actually the kids are home now. So one of them will eat it. The beans. If you'll recall last year, we had purchased some contaminated soil um, that appeared to have, have some sort of like amino pyrrolid contamination. It's unfortunately those kinds of things don't show up on any sort of testing. They can do damage even in very small amounts and the way that stuff gets into like purchased compost like what I purchased is um, the, the grass crops are sprayed with them something like graze on. Cows eat it and then the cow's manure ends up being put in compost and the 
poison, it's what it is, goes all the way through that and ends up in the soil. And, and it is developed specifically to target like nightshades, legumes, and things that typically grow detrimentally in grass crops. Well, nightshades and legumes are what we grow in summer gardens. And that tunnel, that one, which had all my nightshades in it last year, the whole tunnel was nightshades. That was the one with the contaminated soil. So we lost many of those plants. Um, we still maintained some of them and did a lot of efforts throughout the year. And I'm actually gonna be doing a video soon with Will kind of talking about like what you can do more practically. It, it's not one of those things that when you get something like that, it's like, here's the ABC six week program that you can get it out of, of there. It's really just about minimizing it and building soil health over time. And I didn't wanna scrape it out. I wanted to be committed to actually building the soil health. Uh, so one thing that we did learn last year is that legumes, beans, are extremely sensitive to whatever that common contaminant is. And as we found out last year sharing our story, many, many, many people were dealing with it. Apparently this was ending up in all sorts of soil meant for the home gardener, um, which you know, when food prices are going crazy and people are concerned about the potential of food shortages and all the stuff that's being reported on the news, it's definitely not a great time to not be able to garden. So we really want to make sure that we can f share as much information to help people. And the one thing that I am going to continue shouting from the rooftops, uh, because of my own experience, the tomatoes and peppers died slowly. The beans died fast. Any beans we planted in that soil, the beans died within a week. They would sprout, they would come up, and then they would shrivel up and die. Which is awesome. I mean, it's not awesome. I hate the fact that even this stuff exists and that it's something we're having to deal with, but we have a tell. And if we can have a canary in the coal mine, we can potentially protect our gardens from being completely obliterated by something that doesn't belong in them. Our new approach here on our farm is any soil that comes in which we're not at the point of making all our compost yet we're working on it we're doing verm vermicomposting we're doing micro remediation with mushrooms we're keeping our um, cows manure and our stuff and building our own compost uh, but even still with all of that we're planting beans first. So these beds all have beans in them right now because we're gonna see how they grow. It's warm enough. We'll have to, we'll have to do some sort of protection whenever it does freeze in a week and a half. Um, probably just closing up the high tunnel or covering them with something. It's supposed to be a really mild frost. But if you are gonna bring any soil in, put some soil in the pot and sprout a couple of beans in it. They don't have to be fancy seeds. Literally can just get a bag of pinto beans from the grocery store. Sprout a couple of them in there and let them grow and see what happens. If they're growing and in a couple of weeks, you do it on your windowsill. Like you don't have to have a greenhouse. You don't have to do this outside. Just get a pot of the soil and do this. And it'd be awesome before you buy a truckload of soil to be able to get a sample and do this. And of course there could be some variation. There's just gonna be some risk of dealing with this. The fact that this is a problem that's going on in the world, we're just gonna have to be aware. And I think do the best we can to be sustainable but it's just not feasible. I mean, people have to buy soil, especially gardening in neighborhoods and stuff like that. And so if you have to, if you can get a sample first, that's great. If you can't and you buy a small amount of the soil, get some of it, sprout the beans and watch how they do. If they're growing fine and looking healthy after a week or two, I think you can be pretty safe to assume that that soil is okay, at least with the issue of the amino pyrrolid. Um, so that's what I've done. We have, we have some soil we had gotten from another source. That's what's in the raised beds out here. And I did put some tomatoes in them at the end of last year and they were fine. Um, grew some beans in them. And now I'm gonna be going back and gathering some soil out of the contaminated high tunnel, uh, sprouting some beans in there as well as taking some soil out and sprouting some beans in my greenhouse and just, you know, so I can be absolutely sure that's not the weather affecting them. I can't say that that's like 100%, but I know that that was the first sign that we had a problem last year. So we just kept re-sowing the beans. This is before the nightshade started to show signs of damage. 
and Will and I both were like, what is going on? Like, why are the beans dying? Because they just kept dying. Well, then the nightshade started to twist and curl and become really gnarly looking. And as soon as that happened, I recognized what it was because I've seen other people share and discuss it. Got to the source, found out it was happening all over, found out, and that's when we started doing um, compost teas and mushrooms and uh, growing things like sunflowers and wheat that pull a lot of toxins and doing a lot of stuff to see uh, what we could do to make it better. I'm very curious to see how beans do in my contaminated soil this year. I'm curious to see how beans do in the high tunnel where I just showed you that we'd sprouted them. I don't think that soil was contaminated, but um, we'll, we'll know soon. I'm really hoping that maybe that one simple tip can save some other people the heartache of what we experienced last year because we filled that high tunnel up with plants who we had started entirely from seed and then watched them wither away, become stunted, and watched many of them die. And that was really rough as a waste of a lot of time and a lot of money. And um, I can't imagine going through the heartache as a new gardener if a person had worked really hard to plant their first garden and then everything died. And because I know people internalize so much, people will say, I kill everything I touch, I'm a bad gardener. And I'm like, well, hold on now. <laughs> there are other factors. And I think a lot of people have probably thrown their hands up at gardening because of something like bad soil. Now I knew, because I know I'm not a bad gardener when that started to happen, I knew there was some factor that had nothing to do with me that was causing a problem. And so now I'm gonna share the bean test um, with everybody that I know because I, I would love for your garden to not be poisoned on mine either. It's getting dark and I'm so glad that I decided to go on a little walk with you chat a little even whenever i feel like not doing much of anything that always makes me feel better thank you guys for hanging out with me today i bless you until next time